birds. Birds. Birds live in my backyard. Brown birds and blue birds. They've been living there since the beginning of time. They love my backyard. They love to do loop-de-loops off those warm currents of air. They love to fly on top of my roof and kick gravel on my head, these birds. And they love to eat those snails that leave trails. Eat those pyracanthus berries and get very drunk and smash into my windows, these birds. Well, everything was just copacetic for the longest time until all of a sudden one day my neighbor, Mr. Arthur P. Anderson, placed upon his deck a blue pool of water. And the bluebirds, they thought it was theirs. They lined up every morning with little blue towels and little blue goggles and little blue fins and they went swimming in their pool of water. Brown birds thought to themselves, they'd like a pool of water too. Maybe if they did some praying, they'd get some water. They did some brown bird praying. <laughs> no pool. Bluebirds became very superior and very arrogant with their water. They even did a little trickle down theory and invited a brown bird to come up and sing to them. She was very beautiful. Those bluebirds were very excited. Brown birds were very angry. Those blue bluebirds up there, they've got the water, and now they've got our women folk. We better do some. Well, not any more praying for sure, but some flying and some shit. And they did. These brown birds spiraled high into the sky, way over that blue pool. And at the very right moment, they let go. Shit on the head of the biggest blue bird. Those blue birds were very angry. They found themselves the bird that had been shit on that big blue bird, and they sharpened that bird's beak to a needle point. They placed an acorn on that, and then a thorn, and then an acorn, and a thorn, until this was one big fighting machine. Brown birds were a little alarmed now. We better find ourselves a brown bird, and they did. They found themselves a big brown bird, and they sharpened that bird's beak to a needle point, and they put an acorn, a thorn, acorn, a thorn, until this was also a mean machine. Now both societies took these two big birds and they lifted them high in the sky. These birds could no longer sing, no longer even fly. They got high in the trees and they screeched at each other. And then plummeted to the earth. Little feathers flying. Little birds got around. We're gonna spend our whole life sharpening beaks and watching brothers fall from the sky. Along comes a red bird, a beautiful red bird. When the red red robin comes, bob 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 along, along. Wake up, wake up, you sleepy heads. Get up, get up, get out of bed. Live, love, laugh, and be happy. She was a poet bird. She sang to them about freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom for everyone. Mother and child, too tired to sleep. Freedom, the right to eat. The curbside saint, the hearing voices. Freedom, the right to choices. Briefcase soldiers getting bolder. Freedom, the right to get older. Child in the playground slowly swings. Freedom, freedom. Freedom is life's simple thing. The little brown birds and little blue birds got themselves together and made themselves a pool of water so they could do swimming together and they could do loop-de-loops in the warm air and kick gravel in my head and eat the pyracantha berries and 
chase those snails that leave trails. But most important of all, they could sing and dream and live freedom from hatred. Birds. <laughs>